Secrets. Most of us have kept a secret at some point in our lives. Something that we've kept hidden even from those closest to us. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. This is George Gibson, and it's very possible that his secrets got him killed. Take a good look at this composite sketch. This suspect is wanted for questioning in the 2000 murder of George Gibson. He is described as a white male, aged 35 to 50 at the time of the murder. The suspect had a tan complexion. He is 5 feet 7 to 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighs 130 to 150 pounds. He had dark hair with some gray in it. The suspect's hair would most likely be all gray today. At the time of the murder, he was wearing a dark colored ball cap. The suspect was last seen on foot on Tylersville Road in Westchester, Ohio on June 22, 2000. Who wanted George dead? What could George have done to provoke someone to shoot him nine times? Seven shots to the head, two shots to the chest. Investigators stated that when you're dealing with a mysterious murder such as this, you must reconstruct everything about a person's life up to the point of their murder. So let's begin with George's profile. George W. Gibson, age 47. George and his wife Paige Smith were veterinarians from central New York. The couple had worked for Procter & Gamble for 10 years in the research department, testing drug safety. Those who knew the couple said there were no issues in the marriage, and they appeared to be very happy. Two years before the murder, Procter & Gamble transferred the couple to work in their Ohio facility. Paige continued to make regular business trips back to her research department in New York. Once George, Paige, and their three dogs were settled into their home at 7165 Tylersville Road in Westchester, George became a member of a local church and continued to participate in Boy Scouts. Friends and co-workers said that George was known as a man of immense intellect, quiet leadership, and great compassion. But there was more to George more than anyone would have ever guessed. George was keeping a secret. Did the web of deceit that George was spinning get him killed? Let's take a look at what happened to George Gibson. On June 22, 2000, George went to work as usual. His co-workers only remember one odd occurrence that day. George took a phone call and then told co-workers that he would be leaving work early. On the last day of his life, George left work at 3.40. He lived only 22 miles away, so it would only have taken him 20 to 30 minutes at the most for him to arrive home. Instead, George would disappear for nearly two hours. Investigators have never been able to find where George went. There was no bank or credit card activity during the last two hours of his life. George's wife Paige was at home during this time and packing a bag to fly back to New York on business. She left home before George arrived, went to the airport, and boarded a plane at 6 p.m. At 5.20 p.m. that afternoon, Neighbors saw George arrive home and pull his car into the garage and close the garage door. This was the last time George was seen alive. A little after 5.20 p.m., neighbors heard a popping noise. 
one neighbor remembers looking out and seeing the man in the composite sketch walking through the neighborhood. That evening, Paige called George to let him know that she had arrived safely in New York and didn't get an answer. The next morning, June 23rd, Paige again tried to reach George at home, but still no answer. Now alarmed, Paige called the lab where George worked and talked to one of his co-workers. She was told that George didn't come to work and that they had not heard from him. This was out of character for George. So his co-workers notified police and asked them to do a wellness check. In the meantime, Paige called their neighbor Wallace Marshall and asked if he would go and check on George because she hadn't been able to reach him. The Marshalls had a key to the Gibson's house. At 12.30 p.m., police and neighbor Wallace Marshall met at the Gibson's front door, which was slightly ajar. Stepping inside, the officer found the body of George Gibson. It was one of the most gruesome and bloody scenes the officer had ever observed. Police Chief John Bruce stated, The violent homicide leads us to believe it was more than just a random encounter. The violent, brutal overkill of George Gibson stunned everyone. Further investigation of the crime scene sent authorities digging deeper into his life, and here is what they found. A basement window was found broken, and authorities assume that this is how the assailant gained entry into the Gibson's home. George and Paige had three Bernese Mountain Dogs, Two of them would fall victim to George's killer. Their names were Hugo and Capella. One of the dogs was found shot and killed in the basement, and the other was found on the second floor of the home. The third dog and her litter were found unharmed. The Bernese Mountain Dog is a large breed and known to be calm, sociable, and gentle-natured. Like many dogs, their protective instincts to guard their family could possibly have frightened the intruder, and this is what led to their deaths. A total of five rounds were fired at the two dogs. Investigators said that the Gibson's home was not ransacked, although it appeared some things had been moved, as if someone were looking for something. There was no evidence that anything was missing. Once George arrived home at 5.20 p.m., he parked his car in the garage and stepped inside the home. Investigators believe at this point the assailant confronts George and has him sit in a chair on the first floor of the home. After a brief conversation, the assailant took a small caliber gun and shot George seven times in the head and twice in the chest. Police found the front door open, so we can assume that this is where the assailant made his exit. One shot to the head would have killed George, so why did the assailant pull the trigger eight more times? What was the conversation between George and his assailant? The assailant looked through George's things, trying to be careful to put things back where he found them. What could he have been looking for? After a thorough investigation of the crime scene, only one fingerprint was left behind by the assailant. No weapon was found, and there was no evidence that George owned a gun. George's home and work computers were taken into evidence and analyzed. According to task force investigators, Gibson used a Yahoo.com mail address, and the Yahoo address was linked to numerous internet sites. The only piece of information police found of interest was that George belonged to a phone dating service. Evidence showed that George had conversations with at least two women on a dating phone line that allowed party line conversations for people wanting to talk or meet with others. George met with at least one of these women at various locations around the tri-state. The woman in question was from Price Hill. The two had begun their relationship near the end of 1999. George maintained regular contact with her. They talked on the phone, went out to restaurants, 
and to the Mount Airy Forest to hike on occasion. The woman whose name was never revealed contacted police as soon as she learned of George's murder. She willingly cooperated in the investigation and police never named her as a suspect in the case. Details of the relationship were never made public. It's unknown if the two were just friends or if the relationship was sexual. Other than the dating service, investigators found nothing inappropriate on Gibson's computer that would lead them to a motive or a suspect. However, they were eager to talk to anyone who might have used the phone party line service to speak to George before his death. We're looking at all different avenues. We want to know if George was going to meet someone the day he was killed. Authorities also looked into Gibson's profession. Animal rights activists typically protested outside the Procter & Gamble lab building. Gibson's research was known to involve animal testing for his employer. Authorities were less likely to believe anyone fighting to protect animals would take the lives of Gibson's dogs. George's wife, Paige, cooperated with police until August of 2000. Ms. Smith told investigators that all future questions must be directed to her attorney. Captain Bruce described Ms. Smith's actions in light of her previous cooperation as a little confusing. Police would later clear Paige as a suspect in her husband's murder. Paige has since offered a $10,000 reward to anyone that had information leading to an arrest in her husband's murder. To this day, no one has come forward with pertinent information. So who killed George Gibson? He was described as intelligent, quiet, a person who never attracted attention or controversy. George was a professional who took a personal approach to business and was successful at it. But George wasn't perfect. None of us are. George had secrets. He was a married man that had a relationship with another woman. He was a veterinarian who loved animals and yet used animals in his research. On the day of his murder, he received a phone call that prompted him to leave work early. Where did he disappear to for almost two hours before finally returning home to be shot nine times? Was George's murder linked to a phone dating service? Or perhaps it may have been related to his research. Was George being blackmailed? What did George have in his possession that the killer was looking for? Oh, what a tangled web we weave. This is George W. Gibson. On June 22, 2000, George was wearing a blue short-sleeved Oxford button-down shirt with blue jeans. His Procter & Gamble identification badge hung around his neck on a white nylon cord marked PG Pharmaceuticals. He was 6 feet tall, 180 pounds, with close-cropped brown hair, green eyes, and wire-rimmed glasses. His beard and mustache were graying. George drove a 1995 green Ford Escort station wagon with a license plate CAC 8445. If you have any information about the murder of George Gibson on June 22, 2000, or you know the man in the composite sketch that is wanted for questioning in his murder, please contact the Westchester Police Department at 513 513- Seven 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 two two three one. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for making 2022 a special year for our young channel as we continue to close in on 3,000 subscribers. Please consider liking and sharing this video with a friend, and don't forget to comment your thoughts and feelings on the murder of George Gibson. Until I see you again with another cold case, stay well and be safe. This has been Ion Justice.